I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, I'm going to start a series of videos that people have been asking for for a long time, uh, and that is how to set up your Tyrannus with a Lua script so that you can change PIDs and change video transmitter settings from the Tyrannus. So even if you don't have a Betaflight OSD, you can still take advantage of these functions. Stay tuned. This video is about the very first thing you need to do if you're going to take advantage of this feature. And, and it is a really cool feature that you, you should want to take advantage of if you, if you have a Tyrannus. This is kind of too cool to leave out. The ability to change your PIDs from, from the radio. Don't have to put your goggles on and fiddle around with your sticks, you know. Just click, 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 click the buttons. Very nice. Same thing for, for going into and out of pit mode using or changing your, your channel. Again, no need to put your goggles on and fiddle around. Very good feature, very worth taking advantage of. And in order to take advantage of it, the first thing you need to do is you need to be running firmware on your Tyrannus that supports the feature. So I'm going to turn my Tyrannus on right now, and I'm going to go, I'm going to hold down the menu key, and that's going to put me in the system menu. And I'm going to go page, 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 page. And this is going to show me the version number. And you can see my version number is 219. Now, the new version of OpenTX that you want is OpenTX 220. So if you, like me, have 219 on your radio, if you go into Companion and you try to check for updates, it's going to say there's no updates available at this time. And the reason for that is that 219 is the end of the 2.1 version chain. That's it. 2.2.0 is a major version upgrade and it's not considered to be like just a, oh yeah, just go ahead and upgrade. There are some big changes. Everything should be compatible if you're coming from 2.1, but if you're coming from something earlier than 2.1, then you may want to definitely make sure you back up your radio and you may end up having to manually tweak some things if you jump to 2.2. So I'm going to go ahead and download 2.2.0. And here's OpenTX Companion 220 Windows Installer. Companion 2.2 is now running for the first time after the installer finished, and it's telling me that it needs to download the firmware image. So we'll say yes to that and I need to give it a place to save that stuff. I'm gonna go open TX Companion 2.2, and it doesn't really matter. Just save it right there. Before we upgrade to 2.2.0, it's a good idea to back up the radio so that if anything goes wrong in the upgrade, we can restore, every, we could revert to the old firmware and restore everything back the way it was. So what I'm gonna do is, with the USB not connected, I'm gonna power the radio up into bootloader mode, I don't know what you want to call it. I'm going to do that by holding the two trim switches inwards and while holding them inwards I'm going to flip the power switch. And it's going to come up in this special mode, Tyrannus bootloader 216, etc, etc, etc. While it's in this mode, then I'm going to plug in the USB cable. And when I do that, screen will say USB connected and in my machine I will get a couple of new hard drives Tyrannus and Tyrannus SD and you can see those down in Windows Explorer now you don't have to interact with those hard drives directly at least not at the moment but that is your indication that everything has gone correctly now when I go into companion I can click read write and backup radio to file And I'm going to back that file up somewhere on my, on my hard drive. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to flash OpenTX 220 to the radio. But before we do that, we need to change a couple of settings. You're going to click Settings, and then Settings. <laughs> and in here, you're going to choose the Build Options. One of the things I like to do here is I like to click No Heli. If you don't fly with 
Yes. Collective pitch helicopters, then you can take no heli, and it'll get rid of that screen in your radio where it asks you about your swash plate options. You don't have a swash plate, so you don't need that. So it just saves you one screen in your, in your interface. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to tick the Lua option, and the Lua option will enable us to use Lua scripts. If you don't tick the Lua option, then you won't be able to do any of this. I'll then click File, Download again, and you'll notice, well, you, you probably won't notice this, but the name is different here. Now I need to download the new firmware that has the Lua script and the NoHeli option available. Previously, when I downloaded, it was just the standard one. So I'm going to go ahead and save that somewhere on my hard drive. And now that that's done, I should be able to do read write, write firmware to radio. Notice again that up here, the default firmware is what I previously selected, the No Heli and Lua option, version 2.2.0. And we should be ready to write to TX. And we're done. Now 2.2.0 is on the radio. I'm now going to go and exit. And let's just see what is happening. I'm getting a warning now, EEPROM data 217, press any key. Now the, the radio will now convert the EEPROM to the new format and don't need to worry about what that is. That's just a thing it needs to go through. Now this warning you will have to deal with. We're getting an SD card warning. The contents of the SD card are not compatible with the version of, uh, of OpenTX that we're using. And for that, we're going to need to fix uh, manually. So I'm going to turn the radio off, I'm going to hold those switches in again, and I'm going to turn them on again and get back to the bootloader screen, and I'm going to plug in the USB cable. Those USB drives are going to pop up again. There they are. And one of them is Tyrannus, which you can ignore, and the other is Tyrannus SD, and that is actually the contents of your SD card, and that's what we're going to need to update. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to... make a folder and I'm just going to back up the contents of that SD card just again in case anything gets screwy I'll have it there like for example I've downloaded the amber voice pack and if I overwrite the contents of this SD card I don't want to lose that or have to download it again so here I am back at the OpenTX220 page and I now need to download the SD card content for 220 I'm going to click that link and here it is. And I'm going to pick the one of these that is correct for my radio. So let's see. This is a Tyrannus X9D, Tyrannus Plus X9D. So I believe the one I need is OpenTX X9D Plus. And we've got a zip file here that I'll go ahead and click on to download. So here's my SD card on the right, and here is my backup directory on the left. And I've backed up the contents of the SD card to the backup directory. I'm now going to delete everything off the SD card in the Tyrannus. Now the SD card in the Tyrannus is empty. We finished downloading the zip file of the new contents and I'm just going to take all of that stuff let's just put this over on the left and that over on the right. So here's my Tyrannus SD card. And here's the zip file I downloaded with the new correct contents. I'm just going to grab all that stuff and drag it over. And that will take a little while. All the files have copied over now, 12 minutes later. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and restore my, my sound pack so I'm going to go to my, my backup folder. Joshua from the future here to give you a big warning. Pay attention here. 2.1 sound packs are not compatible with 2.2. It seems like they work, uh, but and some of the files will work, but some of the sounds don't work correctly, or sometimes the wrong sound will play. You know, and so do not try and use a 2.1 sound pack with 2.2. Uh, I'm going to let you watch me go through the process of, of moving the Amber sound pack over to 2.2 so you can see how to install a sound pack if you want to do it. The process is the same. At the end of this, I'm going to think 
that the Amber Sound Pack has successfully installed, I am wrong. Do not try to use a 2.1 Sound Pack with 2.2. And if anybody out there knows where to get a 2.2 compatible version of Amber, uh, leave it down in the comments because I sure do like Amber and I'm going to miss that voice. And it is in sounds. And you'll notice I named it. This is the old version that came with 219. That's the old sounds. And here is the new version, which is the Amber Sound Pack that uh, sounds nice. If you don't have the Amber Sound Pack on your Tyrannus, it's, 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 it sounds much nicer than the stock ones. And so I'm going to hope that if I just go into sounds, looks like there's a bunch of different languages now where there didn't used to be. But I can see that EN... E-N, that's English, presumably. I'm guessing I don't need these other languages. And I'm just going to try renaming E-N to E-N.old. Anytime you're doing something like this and you're not sure it's going to work, don't just delete the file. Just rename the folder. I'm going to drag my Amber Sound Pack, E-N, from my backup from my SD card. I'm going to drag it in there. And I hope that just by replacing the EN folder uh, with my Amber Sound Pack version will make me have the Amber Sound Pack on the new, uh, on the new uh, firmware. Okay, that's done. Time for the moment of truth. I'm going to disconnect the USB. And I'm going to power cycle the radio. Got a warning. There was Amber right there. And I did not get any warning. And it looks like my models are all there. I think it worked. Awesome. Now that I've got the correct firmware on the radio, the next thing to do is to download the Lua script and install it on the radio and actually figure out how to use it, which we'll do in the next video in this series. But for now, thanks for watching. And as always, happy flying.